Good morning, everybody. Dr. Robin McKay here, and welcome to this week's episode of Mindset Rx. This is your opportunity as an emotionally intelligent leader to set the tone for a positive, productive, and purposeful week. And I'm so glad to be back here with you. I took last week off. My husband and I took a little bit of time off, and now I'm back here in my home office. And it's amazing how when you, at least for me, when I take a little bit of time off, I come back in, and even though I'm in the same place, right, my my location hasn't changed, something inside of me has shifted that gives me fresh perspective and kind of gives myself a reset as we're headed into the last part of 2021, if you can believe it. So welcome. I am your host, and I'm so happy to be here with you. As always, we're going to start with a mindful listening practice where I use my mindfulness spells. And your job is to just listen until you can't hear the, the sound anymore. And then we'll get started with the content today, which is all about what to do if you're bored or burned out at work. And um, I think you're going to see that there's not too much of a difference between being bored and burned out, although that, you know, it's degrees, right? There's an extreme with burnout. So that's what's coming up here today. And then at the end of our broadcast today, I do have a special offer. Not You don't have to stay for it, but I do have a, some things coming up within my organization that I think might be helpful for you and your teams as well. So stick around for that if that lands for you. Let's go ahead and get started with our mindfulness bells this morning. Ready? <sighs> And there we go. That just allows us to arrive and be really present for this time today. I think that's one of the things for leaders that's so important. The first thing oftentimes we do in the morning is grab our phones and just start scrolling, checking text messages, checking emails, what's going on in the world. And there's something that just settles, settles you when you just take a couple minutes and just breathe and listen to something specific. It doesn't have to be my bells, obviously. We do this once a week, but certainly you can find other things to focus on. Just allowing the brain to focus on something specific for a few minutes shifts your energy so that you have more access to your ability to make powerful decisions, to lead well, to guide other people, and so on. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with our content. If you are here with me live, I'd love to hear from you. Just say hello in the comments. And I'm going to see if I can pull this up here. Show comments. Okay. And um, if you're watching the recording, let me know you're watching the recording. I'm always so happy that... Um, we're able to send this recording out to everyone who has signed up for it. And if you would like to receive a copy of the recording or a link to the recording, just um, pop your email address. Hey, Bob and Lana, it's nice to see you all here this morning. This is an important topic on burnout and boredom. Stacy's here. Oh my gosh. Yay. I love seeing everybody here. And since you're here live, if you have a question about either boredom or burnout, Pop that into the comments too, and I'll see if I can get to you at the end. Hey, Joseph is here. So great to see you all. So great. So let's get started with content. Burnout. If you're not burned out in the last 18 months or so, holy smokes, you're a walking miracle because most of the leaders I've been talking with, specifically in tech, healthcare, fintech, and other high-performance fields, everyone's a little crispy around the edges. And depending on what you've experienced over the last 18 months or so with the pandemic and all of the, the shifts that we've made in our world, um, there is a great chance that you are. Now here's, I wanna start here. I just wanna give you some quick understanding of what burnout actually is, because I think we use that word a lot and we don't know exactly what that means. There are actually three different elements to burn out. One are physical symptoms, you know, not being able to get out of bed in the morning, being irritable, short-tempered, 
um, having low energy, having um, difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, or waking up early. That's another symptom of burnout. And I'd love to hear from you. How do you know when you're burned out, just physically, what's going on for you? I know that for the people that I work with, they say a lot of times it's um, difficulty concentrating. Now, the challenge for for a lot of people who are very bright and talented is that we just deploy more intellectual resources to whatever task we're focusing on to, to kind of shore us up so we can sustain burnout for a long time. And that's not a healthy thing either, but that is something that we actually get rewarded for a lot in our culture, in corporate culture specifically. So we've got the physical symptoms. There's also with burnout, there's also symptoms that look a whole lot like cynicism, kind of distancing yourself from your clients, your colleagues, finding something wrong with everybody who you come into contact with. Your patience is running short. Um, maybe you're rolling your eyes publicly or behind the scenes, things like that, um, that we don't always attribute to burnout. Sometimes we just attribute it to the fact that I'm more of a cynical person than most. That can actually be a symptom of burnout. And then over time, when somebody's burned out and burnout happens in chronic sustained situations of stress, when you're doing asked to do the same thing over and over and over again with, without necessarily a break, without taking time off, or even if you do take time off, it's not quality time off, right? You're still checking your email and you're still phoning into the office, even if you're away from, you're supposed to be out of the office. Um, and that, that has to do with your career kind of grinding to a halt. Maybe in the past, you were on a really high performance trajectory and you were getting promotions and raises and promotions and raises. And then all of a sudden you hit a glass ceiling and you can't seem to figure out which way to kind of break through that glass ceiling or how to how to work around that, that can also be a symptom of burnout. So those are the three different elements of burnout. Now, to get real specific for each of you, we'd have to dial into what's actually going on with you, but I wanted to give you that first. And then I wanna to talk to you about what doesn't work when you are bored, when you're burned out. What doesn't work are things like changing jobs. In fact, that's one of the things that ends up happening a lot when people start feeling burned out, they start asking this, this question. These are existential questions. What's next? Is this all there is? I know I'm meant to do something else. And that may be the case, but the burnout actually mitigates your ability to actually do something else. Because listen, I would do something else if I weren't so exhausted. I would do something else if I weren't so busy. But our brain tells us, well, if I just change jobs then I'll feel better. But it's what um, people in Alcoholics Anonymous call it doing a geographic. Wherever you go, there you are. And so the idea of just changing jobs to relieve yourself of burnout is not going to work because you're, you're moving into a new position with the same practices, the same habits, the same attitudes. What's new, your brain loves novel experiences. So you're getting a surge of dopamine, which is feels really good for about six weeks. But after about six weeks, you kind of get into the groove again and you find yourself in the same place that you were in your old position. Asking the same questions. Is this all there is? I know I'm meant for more than this. So don't, do, don't just do a geographic. Don't just change jobs. And in fact, what burnout sometimes can do for the people who are on job searches, it can actually prohibit them from finding jobs because there's something in your system on a soul level that's saying, I absolutely 100% cannot do another thing until I recover. Now, your conscious mind, your intellect may not recognize that because you've trained yourself to override symptoms of burnout just through you know, hard work and grit and tenacity and all the, the uh, qualities that get rewarded in corporate culture. But your soul is saying something different. And that could be, if you're looking for a job right now, if you're looking for a new position right now, that could be one of the reasons you're not able to find what you're looking for is because literally your soul is saying, we have to take care of me first. And then we'll go out and do the next thing. But right now I need to take care of myself. 
So geographics don't work. Going on vacation typically doesn't work. In fact, if you go on vacation, I heard, I remember hearing this a long time ago that the feeling of vacation lasts about 24 hours after you return to work. That's it, 24 hours. So you go on a two week holiday, go back to work, you feel good, you still got your braids in from your trip to Mexico or whatever. And then, sorry, I'm a girl, that, that happens sometimes. But then, you know, a day later, you're back in the, in the grind of things. You're back doing what you've always done. And that feeling of refreshed, that feeling of freedom that you experienced when you're on holiday goes away. The, the last thing I'm going to say that doesn't work real well, but you all are so impeccable at this. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. That's my Midwestern way of saying, you know, just get back to work. And um, just keep doing your work. Ignore it. Ignore what you're feeling. Buckle down. Get your nose to the grindstone and just keep working. And maybe someday later when I'm retired or when the winds of change happen, I'll feel better. So burnout doesn't get better by ignoring it or by doing the same thing you've always done. So if those things don't work, what does work? And I'd love to hear from you if you're watching live or the recording, what's what's occurring to you as you're hearing about burnout, what doesn't work, what what's coming up for you? I'd love to I'd love to know. Let's see some comments with that too. All right, so let's get into what does work. The first thing that works is this is to acknowledge that you're feeling burned out. Just acknowledge it. You don't listen, even if you just PM me and say I'm burned out, that's an acknowledgement. Even if you're just acknowledging it to yourself, that's an acknowledgement. But give yourself permission to really assess what am I actually feeling here? I am burned out. And for the love of all things that are holy, can we please not make yourself wrong for being burned out? That's my coach's request, it's my leader's request, is that you just allow yourself to experience what you're experiencing without judgment, without criticism, without making yourself wrong. I think this is the number one thing that most leaders struggle with, is that if I say that I'm burned out, that means that I'm weak. And if I'm weak, nobody's going to follow me. Well, listen, humans follow other humans, and humans follow those of us really well who are able to be human, to admit that we've got some stuff going on and we're going to take care of ourselves. You're setting the tone for the people who are watching you. And just think about this. If you're burned out, think about your people. They've got to be burned out too. But if you're ignoring it from yourself, chances are, chances are that you're going to be ignoring it for your people as well. And it just creates a system of burnout. Which is, by the way, the opposite of innovation. If you want to have an innovative company, if you want to do innovative things on this planet, you cannot be burned out and do the innovative things that you want to do. Innovation stems from necessity, certainly, but it also stems from creativity. And creativity is best access when you're not burned out, when you're feeling your best. Um, so I want to just go to the comments and I just want to say too, this is probably going to be a little bit longer than our 15 minutes. I know that we're right about time right now, but we're getting a lot of comments from, from people that I want to, when I want to get to, um, so let's see, Joseph says I'm burned out. You got everything that I'm feeling right now. Yes. And that acknowledging that and hearing that from another person, particularly somebody like me, who's got an expertise in this is an important thing. Now, Joseph, it's what, what do you do about it? What do you do about it? And that's a decision point, not just for you. Thank you for bringing that forward. Not just for you, but for anybody who's burned out, what do I do now? And Bob says, you throw yourself into a hobby that's completely immersive, like sailboat racing. How exhilarating is that to be sail sailboat racing? to be able to be in flow. And flow is actually one of my prescriptions, if you will, for burnout. Do your flow more. That, that thing that brings flow to you is the thing that where you lose track of time, you become completely absorbed and engaged in it. Your skills 
meet the challenge every single time, even though you don't know if they will. And that flow is actually the consciousness state that allows those new innovative programs and services and, and projects and products to come to life when you're in flow, even if it's doing something entirely different than what you're doing at work. Stacy says, I've been considering taking FMLA time, wondering if that's part of my prescription. Well, let me say this, whether you take family leave time, you take PTO time, you do, do an OOO on Fridays, every Friday, whatever that is. Remember, unless you're actually doing something in an organized way, getting support during that time, going on a retreat, getting into some coaching or therapy, something like that, that's actually going to help you shift your relationship to work. When you get back from FMLA, it'll just be, it'll have that feeling of being another holiday. I got back, I'm refreshed for about a day, and then I get back into the swing of things. So whatever time you take off, whether it's FMLA or anything else, the it's what you do with the time. That's the most important thing. It's what you do with the time. If you're taking up horseback riding during your FMLA time, that will change you. And it will probably, if you allow it to, change your relationship to work as well. If you do executive coaching, that will change you. Whether you take time off or not, that will change you. And it will change your relationship with work, with time, with money, with yourself. And that's what's actually going to allow you to recover from the burnout is changing your relationship to those quadrants of your life, the time, the money, the work, and then your heart as well. Okay. So the, those are the things that work really flow, doing things that bring you flow, acknowledging that you're burned out being, I'm going to use this word productive because this is a word that we all use as, as leaders. I want to be as productive as possible, but I want to be productive in a way that serves my soul while I'm taking time off, if I choose to take time off. So whether it's journaling, meditating, going to church or temple, walking in a labyrinth, going on a retreat, going sailboat racing, whatever that is, just making sure, and this is an important thing, don't escape your life. Sometimes we use the things that we love to escape our daily life. But remember, when you return to your daily life, your daily life is still your daily life. And that hasn't changed. So I always recommend being really introspective about and deliberative about why am I doing this? Am I doing this to escape my life or am I doing it to expand who I am so that I can make a contribution that only I can make? So do you see the difference between escapism and and doing something mindfully and consciously to heal yourself so that wherever you are in the world, whether you're sailboat racing or leading a meeting or writing a book or doing a speech or solving a problem or generating new strategy, you're in your best self. You're in your best energy. So no more escapism. I don't know who needs to hear that, but somebody needs to hear that. Don't escape your life. Let's just change it. Transform yourself and your life transforms as a result of that. Okay. So that's my big message today on, on uh, what to do about burnout. And if you're still here with me, I'm and you certainly don't have to stay for this part, but I did want to let you guys know that I'm doing some private coaching this fall with emotionally intelligent leaders who are burned out. Um, we start by just doing an assessment of where is your burnout? What's going on with you? And then I, if I feel I can help, I make some recommendations on how we can work together to move you through that burnout to help you recover pretty quickly, actually, from burnout. I have a methodology that I use. Oh, jo Joseph, you're welcome. Let me know how that goes for you. I'd love to hear from you either in a private message or in the comments. What's your number one takeaway? everyone from today's session. And what are you going to do differently? Really curious about that. Really curious. 
One thing I know for sure is that most of you being experienced professionals are beyond free advice. You're beyond tips and tricks. You're beyond reading books. And if you've got that call in your heart of what's next for me, and I really want to find out, but I'm so exhausted or burned out that I just don't have the energy to do that. That's a signal that we should probably talk. And if I feel I can help, I'll make some recommendations on how we can work together to help you recover from your burnout more quickly and then get on with things so you don't have to escape your life. You can just do your life and do it to the very best of your ability. Not because you have to, not because it's your job, not because it's your duty or your responsibility, but because it's aligned with what you came here to do. It's aligned with your soul's mission. All right. That's my big message for you today. It's been my joy and pleasure to be here with you. I will be here next week. And I feel like we should keep talking about burnout for a while. This is an important topic uh, in the middle of the great resignation, because that's the other consequence of burnout is people just don't just escape their lives. They just jettison. They jump ship and they're done. And we're losing a lot of good people in our organizations to burnout. Um because the systems aren't set up to support us in the way that we need to be supported at this time. The change starts with you as a leader. And then that has a ripple effect to all of the people that you come into contact with, all of the people that you influence have an opportunity to respond to how you're shifting your own life. So start with you and I will see you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>